Welcome to another striper season update brought to you by West Marine. It seems like there are three big schools of fish set up up and down the striper coast. The first school is the one around Long Island, Connecticut, and Block Island. Those fish are keyed in on bunker, which are in no shortage on the Long Island beaches. And those fish are still willing to bite topwater plugs even in broad daylight, which is really exciting. We had on the waters Anthony DeCicci and Adam Eldridge shoot down to Connecticut for a short party boat video. And afterwards, they snuck out on the boat and managed to stick stripers up to 45 pounds on top water. It's no secret at this point that the canal fished really well this past week, even after the breaking tides have passed. They're small mackerel littered throughout the canal, and it seems like the striped bass are kind of playing goalkeeper, keeping those smacks pinned in. If you're an angler in northern New England, now is a great time to be on the water. We have big fish from Cape Ann all the way up into southern Maine, and it seems like those fish are gonna stick around for the summer. As far as the weather goes, it seems like this July has been a little bit colder and rainier than usual, but as those hot days inevitably come back, fishing at nighttime is a great bet for targeting these fish up and down the striper coast. So in this week's striper season update, we're gonna go through the basics of fishing at night. So fishing at night is a really great way to increase your catch of striped bass, especially when we move into the hotter months of the summer. Here we have some of the basic tools you need to get started night fishing. And the best part about night fishing is that if you've never done it before, it can seem a little bit intimidating, but it's really not that bad. And there's a wide range of lures and gear that you can use to get the job done. A lot of really good nighttime striper spots aren't exactly spots that you would guess right off the top of your head. A lot of times swimming beaches, popular destinations like that, that clear out after dark can be really good striper spots. And honestly, areas that seem devoid of life in the daytime can really come alive at night. So it's definitely worth checking out wherever you are on the striper coast, fishing that stretch at night. So here we have some of the tools. And first up, when you're fishing at night, you're gonna need light. Most of the time, striped bass are gonna be kind of wary of lights. So you wanna keep your usage of them on the water to a minimum but you definitely need something with you to you know, unhook fish, untangle lines, tie knots, anything that happens on the water, you know? So here are kind of two options that you can use to illuminate your fishing. Here we have a headlamp. This is the most popular option. A lot of guys get into night fishing with a headlamp. And the really important thing you want in your headlamp is good reusable batteries like double A's and just keep a bunch of double A's in your glove box if you need to change them out so you can constantly have power. And the other feature that you really need is to make sure that it has a red light setting. That red light setting is one of the options that you can cycle through on some headlamps, and that is going to throw a little tiny beam of red light that is just bright enough to illuminate what you're doing, but also not destroy your night vision. That red light doesn't wreck your night vision. So you want to let your eyes get dialed into the light, you know, really get that night vision going, and then you can turn on that red light when you need it, and it won't destroy it. Now the other option you have is using something like this. This is a flashlight, waterproof flashlight, attached to a plastic lanyard or something of the likes like that. The reason that plastic material, now you could use surgical tubing, this is just what happened to be on sale at Ace Hardware when I was there, but any plastic flexible tubing is gonna be a good bet. I like having my lanyard really short, so this is 24 inches total of tubing, but most guys usually go for 30 or 36 inches to keep it a little ways down their body, but I do a lot of hiking when I fish, so I like having a really short one that's not gonna bounce around too much. That plastic material is gonna be a lot more comfortable on your neck and skin when you're out there for a really long time than a lanyard, and so you can just affix it to a waterproof flashlight just with duct tape, surgical tape, you can make it look however you want. One thing I also like to do is throw a small tactical flashlight in the bottom of my plug bag. That way I have it with me. I have a backup light at all times and I never have to really think about running out of battery or running out of light because I have that waterproof backup with me. So the other really important component of fishing at night is your lure color. Now, daytime plugs, we'll take the Daiwa SP Minnow for example, that's a plug that comes in a lot of different color patterns, but one color pattern that you'll see often stocked on tackle shop shelves is the purple and black. Now, if you do most of your fishing in the daytime, you might ask yourself, what is that color exactly for? And it is by far most productive as a nighttime color. The reason it's so productive is because black lures, here we have a black bomber. The black lure 
actually throws off the best silhouette in dark water. So striped bass, when they're trying to key in on their prey, they're using their lateral line to kind of hone in on the movements and the vibrations of the bait fish, or in this case, your lure. And so when they're honing in on their bait and starting to use their vision a little bit to kind of prepare for the final strike, they're actually looking for the silhouette more than the color of the lure, especially at night. And so this black, these black lures throw off the best silhouette in the dark water and make it easier for the fish to hone in on them. Now, I mentioned the Daiwa SP minnow earlier, but there's a lot of great minnow plugs out there that will catch fish in a variety of different conditions. This here is a bomber. This is one of my all around lures that I use pretty much regardless of condition when I'm fishing, especially the beaches. It works pretty well in rough surf, great in calm surf. And the Daiwa SP minnow is one of my go-tos when it's a little bit rougher. And the red fin is my go-to when it's really, really calm. Now, you'll notice that if I shake this lure, aside from the trebles bouncing around a little bit, there's actually a rattle inside the lure. And I really like a rattle when I'm fishing in a little bit of chop at night, but when it's glass calm, I prefer a lure that does not have a rattle. That's gonna be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more muted when the fish have a better chance to look at and observe the plug. This rattle, on the other hand, when it's a little bit choppy, it's gonna let the fish hone in on it better too. So let's talk about the retrieve speed of these plugs for a second. There's an old saying in the striper fishing world that when you're fishing minnow plugs or needlefish or any lure at night that you fish on a really slow retrieve, you wanna go as slow as your grandmother would and then half that speed. So at the end of a lot of nights of fishing, I find myself really creeping these plugs along very, very slowly. And especially in the calm surf, all it takes is a V wake on the surface at a near crawled retrieve to generate strikes. So when in doubt, I usually keep slowing things down until I get a bite. There are those nights now and again where a fast retrieve or an aggressive retrieve will get generate the bites. But for the most part, when you're fishing at nighttime, you're gonna wanna slow things down considerably. The other lure that's really taken off in the recent seasons is big soft plastics rigged on relatively light jig heads. The reason I like this specific jig head so much is because it's half an ounce, but it still has a really stout hook. There are a lot of half ounce jig heads out there that don't have as stout of hooks because they're not really designed to hold up to striper fishing. But the Joe Bags is one of them. Really stout hook, as you can see there. And it just is a great all around jig head. And when you're fishing from shore on the sandy beaches or really anywhere, you don't need that much lead to get down to the bottom. Most of the time from the surf, you're not gonna be casting into a whole lot of water. So it's really about matching the jig head to just be able to glide just above the bottom. Now at a place like the canal, that might take you know three, four, even five ounces when the tide is really ripping. But on the beaches and other sandy areas, sometimes half an ounce is all it takes. Even unweighted soft plastics are a great bet too. Now this technique works from the surf, but it also works fantastic from the boat and from the kayak. That same half ounce jig head to three quarters of an ounce or even an unweighted soft plastic, great bets from the surf and the kayaks when you're accessing skinnier water. But from a boat, you can bump up to an ounce, ounce and a half, and stay near the bottom in deeper water and get strikes from some big fish. Stretches of beach that are seemingly devoid of life really come alive at night. And fishing soft plastics and minnow plugs in black, especially during the new moon, is awesome. But if you're fishing on a clear night during a full moon, you can actually get away with brighter colors like even white and chicken scratch. Chicken scratch is one of my favorite colors for fishing during a full moon. But it's generally about matching the ambient lighting around you. So if it's a pitch black night, one of those new moon nights, black is gonna be the way to go. But if it's crystal clear full moon night when you can see your shadow behind you, the white or chicken scratch is gonna be the way to go. And most of my nighttime surf bag actually consists of just simply black and white. Those two colors are enough to match the ambient lighting close enough and generate strikes. So we have a full moon ahead of us, so it's a great time to start fishing at night with dark color lures. And now that we're into summer and the waters are pretty darn warm, that nighttime activity is gonna be much higher than it is during the day from the surf and from the boat.